magnetic monopoles are the manifestation of a magnetic charge, like an electron is a manifestation of electric charge. Prepare to be intrigued by a story that delves into the mysterious world of science, where experiments can sometimes have unintended consequences. While movies often portray scientific experiments gone wrong, resulting in monstrous outcomes, what if I told you that an experiment had actually cracked open the Earth's magnetic field, unleashing something totally unexpected? Scientists are fascinated by magnetic monopoles, a phenomenon that could potentially have a profound impact on the universe. To fully grasp why they are so obsessed with this peculiar entity, we must go back to where it all began. So buckle up and get ready to embark on a journey that will take you to the depths of scientific discovery. Let's travel back in time to the early 19th century, when we knew very little about electricity and magnetism. Scientists believed that electric charges existed in two forms, with similar charges repelling each other and opposite charges attracting. They also discovered that currents were created by electric charges in motion, which we now know as electricity. We were also familiar with permanent magnets, which had north and south poles. However, no matter how small we broke them down, we could never find individual north or south poles. They always came in pairs in what's called a dipole configuration. During the 1800s, we made significant discoveries that helped us understand the electromagnetic universe. We discovered induction, which is when moving electric charges create magnetic fields, and changing magnetic fields can induce electric currents. We also found out about electromagnetic radiation, which is light of varying wavelengths emitted by accelerating electric charges. As we pieced all our knowledge together, we realized that the universe was not symmetrical in terms of electric and magnetic fields and charges. Maxwell's equations, which describe electromagnetic phenomena, only have electric charges and currents, with no fundamental magnetic charges or current. However, we can easily modify these equations mathematically to include magnetic charges and currents. All we need to do is introduce the concept of a fundamental magnetic charge a single north or south pole that exists in the object itself. Now, are you ready to delve further into the mysterious world of electromagnetism and the quantum nature of the universe? If so, hold on to your hats because we're about to take a ride through the wild and woolly world of magnetic monopoles. When scientists add extra terms to Maxwell's equations, something remarkable happens. The equations become completely symmetric. Suddenly, moving magnetic charges generate electric fields, and a changing electric field can induce a magnetic current. But this was all just theoretical until we began to understand the role that symmetries play in physics and the quantum nature of the universe. It's possible that electromagnetism is symmetric between electric and magnetic components at some higher energy level, and we're living in a low energy, broken symmetry version of that world. Pierre Curie first acknowledged the existence of magnetic charges in 1894, but it was in 1931 that Paul Dirac made a remarkable discovery that even a single magnetic charge in the universe implied that electric charges should be quantized everywhere. This is particularly interesting because quarks have electric charges that are quantized in fractional amounts. The discovery of a mechanism that could explain the properties we observe in the universe is one of the most powerful hints we have in physics for the possibility of new discoveries. However, the existence of magnetic monopoles is not yet proven, but the discoveries thus far suggest that it could be a possibility. Scientists have been on the hunt for magnetic monopoles and they won't give up anytime soon. Why, you ask? Well, when researchers explore a new idea, they look for any potential problems, known as pathologies, that could cause the universe to break. When the T-Hooft-Polyakov monopoles were proposed, scientists found a pathology. The magnetic monopoles could overclose the universe. Imagine a universe that collapses in on itself like a deflating balloon. Sounds disastrous, right? The issue arises from the fact that in the early universe, particles and antiparticles could be created with enough energy. When symmetry is broken, you either give a previously massless particle a non-zero rest mass or spontaneously rip a large number of particles or particle-antiparticle pairs out of the vacuum. This could cause a rapid increase in energy density 
and a subsequent imbalance in the rate of expansion. In other words, there's simply too much stuff in the universe. So scientists are determined to find magnetic monopoles, but they must also be careful not to accidentally cause the universe to collapse in on itself, resulting in a big crunch. This is known as overclosing the universe and it can't accurately describe our reality. We are still here and nothing has re-collapsed. This is also known as the monopole problem, which is one of the three main factors driving cosmic inflation. To solve this problem, scientists have turned to the concept of inflation, which stretches the universe to a state that appears flat and uniform across all observable locations. If inflation can solve the horizon problem, it can also resolve the monopole problem. As long as the universe doesn't heat up beyond a certain scale after inflation ends. Despite the difficulties, scientists continue to search for answers and unlock the secrets of the universe. So how have scientists been searching for magnetic monopoles? In 1981, experimental physicist Blas Cabrera came up with a cryogenic experiment to detect magnetic monopoles. He created a coil of wire with eight loops, specifically designed to detect these elusive particles. If a magnetic monopole ever passed through the coil, Cabrera reasoned that he would detect a specific signal due to the electron induction that would occur. While passing one end of a permanent magnet into or out of a coil of wire induces a current, passing a magnetic monopole through that coil of wire should induce an electric current that corresponds exactly to eight times the theoretical value of the magnetic monopole's charge, thanks to the eight loops in his experimental setup. However, if a dipole passed through, there would be a signal of plus eight followed by a signal of minus eight, allowing the two scenarios to be distinguished from each other. In 1982, Blas Cabrera was conducting an experiment designed to search for magnetic monopoles. However, on February 14th, when no one was present in the office to monitor the experiment, something extraordinary happened. When Cabrera returned the next day, he saw that the experiment had produced a single signal that closely resembled what a magnetic monopole would produce. This discovery caused great interest in the project and raised several questions. Did it mean that the theory of inflation was incorrect and that our universe was indeed filled with magnetic monopoles? Or did it mean that the monopole that should have persisted in our universe happened to pass through Cabrera's detector? Alternatively, was it an experimental error, a prank or something inexplicable? Many subsequent experiments followed, but no one else ever found anything resembling a magnetic monopole. Nonetheless, the search for monopoles continued and CERN took up the challenge with the Large Hadron Collider (LHC), the world's largest and most powerful particle accelerator. The LHC is a vast underground facility with a 17-mile or 27-kilometer ring of superconducting magnets that accelerate particles to almost the speed of light. When these particles collide, a complex array of other particles is produced, leaving a trail that scientists can now follow in their search for the elusive magnetic monopole. To uncover the fundamental building blocks of the universe, scientists rely on two sophisticated detectors that can track the trail of subatomic particles produced by the collisions in the Large Hadron Collider (LHC). One of these detectors is ATLAS, which played a key role in discovering the Higgs boson. With dimensions of approximately 148 feet by 82 feet (45 meters by 25 meters), ATLAS is about half the size of Notre Dame and twice the weight of the Eiffel Tower. Along with other detectors like ALICE, CMS, LHCB and LHCF, scientists use ATLAS to investigate some of the most intriguing mysteries in science, such as the existence of other dimensions, the unifying force in the universe and evidence of dark matter. ATLAS and CMS were the two detectors solely dedicated to solving the Higgs boson puzzle, and all experiments conducted at the LHC are a collaborative effort among scientists worldwide. Interpreting the data generated by particle collisions is a significant challenge, despite the ability to smash particles together at nearly the speed of light. Every second, particles collide about 600 million times in the LHC, providing insight into the workings of atoms and the forces that hold them together. However, the detectors cannot record all the information emitted from the collisions. For example, ATLAS can only record a tiny fraction of data, equivalent to about 27 CDs per minute. 
despite having the potential to fill 100,000 CDs with data every second. Scientists analyze computer simulated and real-world collisions to test their theories on how particles behave, looking for discrepancies between the two which could indicate new discoveries. The data center processes one petabyte of data every day, equivalent to 223,000 DVDs. With scientists sifting through 30 petabytes of data annually, finding new science is an arduous task. Due to technological limitations, not all data generated from proton-proton collisions in the Large Hadron Collider can be stored and analyzed. Therefore, a filtering process called the trigger is used to select data based on the goals of each experiment. This process involves two steps, online and offline analysis. During online analysis, the detector records data, which is then read by fast electronics and computers, and only a selected portion of events is stored. Later, in offline analysis, important data is used to calibrate and adjust LHCb's subdetectors before analyzing the stored data for physics analysis. However, this process is time-consuming and requires a significant amount of human and computing resources. To simplify and accelerate this process, the LHCb collaboration has developed a new technique called real-time analysis, which enables subdetector adjustment to occur automatically during online analysis, and the stored data is immediately available for offline physics analysis. During LHC Run 2, LHCb's trigger system used a combination of quick electronic devices known as the hardware trigger and computer algorithms called the software trigger to select the most intriguing collision events out of the 30 million proton collisions per second in the LHCb detector, resulting in a reduction of data to around 150 kilohertz. Then the selected data was processed by several automatic methods to compute new parameters for calibration. However, for run three and beyond, LHCb has replaced the entire trigger system, removing the hardware trigger and instead reading out the whole detector at the full LHC bunch crossing rate of 40 MHz. This change has allowed LHCb to utilize real-time analysis for selecting data, making the selection process more precise and flexible. The real-time reconstruction method also enables the compression of raw detector data in real-time, giving LHCb more flexibility in choosing the most interesting events and pieces of each event to save for further analysis. Ultimately, around 10 gigabytes of data are stored per second and are readily available for physicists to study. And now, Imperial physicists have developed a new class of experiments at the Large Hadron Collider at CERN that have increased the probability of creating monopoles. Although scientists have not yet discovered any monopoles, these new experiments have allowed researchers to refine their understanding of the properties of monopoles and have directed future experiments. Previous experiments conducted at the LHC and elsewhere have been inconclusive, but this new technique, which uses a different production mechanism, has enabled researchers to eliminate the possibility of certain types of monopoles and has provided insight into where the search for monopoles should focus next. In 2018, the LHC collided heavy ions in the form of lead nuclei, producing the universe's most powerful magnetic field, which is up to a million times stronger than those found in neutron stars. While these magnetic fields exist for a brief moment, they offer a unique mechanism for generating magnetic monopoles. Based on the Schwinger mechanism proposed in the 1930s, the theory of producing electrons and positrons, the electrical equivalent of monopoles, relies on a strong electrical field interacting with quantum fluctuations in a vacuum. Similarly, a powerful magnetic field should generate north and south monopoles, Although there is no evidence of monopoles, a bizarre announcement was made by the organization. The Earth's magnetic field developed a crack and remained open for almost 14 hours. This uncommon phenomenon is known as co-rotating interaction region, CIR, which occurs when fast and slow moving solar wind streams collide in the heliosphere's low and middle latitude regions, comprising the solar magnetic field and the solar winds. CIRs, like coronal mass ejections CMEs, are solar plasma structures that travel towards Earth, carrying shock waves and compressed magnetic fields, causing stormy space weather that usually appears as beautiful aurorae. Coronal mass ejections are caused by the twisting and realignment of the Sun's magnetic field, 
a process known as magnetic reconnection. Strong localized magnetic fields can develop when magnetic field lines tangle, resulting in CMEs breaking through the sun's surface at active regions. CMEs generally arise close to groups of sunspots and are frequently linked to solar flares, although the two phenomena do not necessarily occur together. CMEs, like solar flares, are more likely to occur during the peak of the sun's 11-year activity cycle, when it's most active. As CMEs travel away from the sun after they are launched, they expand in size. Some of the larger ones can fill nearly one quarter of the space between the Earth and the sun by the time they reach our planet. If a CME is sizable enough and travels quicker than the solar wind, it creates a shock wave that carries accelerated charged particles in front of the CME, interfering with space weather and intensifying geomagnetic storms. Although CMEs create stunning auroras, they can also be harmful. In particular, large CMEs can lead to technological disturbances, which are especially problematic in modern times. For instance, in 1859, the Carrington event affected the global telegraph system, and there were even reports of electric shocks and sparks from telegraph machines resulting in ignited papers. In another instance, NASA reported that a CME accompanied a solar flare that hit Earth in 1989, leading to a 12-hour electrical blackout across the entire province of Quebec, Canada. This event resulted in at least $10 million in damages to Quebec's utility company, Hydro-Quebec. But how exactly do CMEs wreak havoc on our technological infrastructure? CMEs can cause electrical surges that can overload power grids and cause widespread blackouts. In addition, they can disturb the Earth's magnetic field, interfere with radio transmissions and increase radio static in the ionosphere. This can be particularly problematic for GPS systems, which are vulnerable to ionosphere disturbances. During a CME event, GPS coordinates can deviate by tens of feet as the charged plasma in the ionosphere bends the path of the radio signal, interfering with the accuracy of GPS. While GPS systems are designed to compensate for such distortions under normal circumstances, severe disruptions to the ionosphere during a CME can cause GPS models to lose track of these changes, further exacerbating the problem. CMEs can cause inaccuracies in location calculation for receivers, as well as potentially damaging Earth orbiting satellites, especially those in high geosynchronous orbits where many communication satellites are located. These satellites can be struck by high currents or high energy particles leading to damage or malfunction. When a CME triggers a geometric storm, vulnerable satellites may need to enter safe mode to avoid electronic harm. Recently, SpaceX experienced the impact of space weather on their Starlink satellites when a geomagnetic storm destroyed around 40 of them, causing losses of more than $50 million in February. Our magnetic field is like a superhero cape protecting us from the harmful effects of solar storms that can wreak havoc on our modern technology. While we used to think that these magnetic shields opened and closed quickly, new research shows they can stay open for hours. It's like leaving a window open during a storm. While the house may deflect the majority of the storm, some damage may still occur inside. Similarly, while our magnetic shield can absorb the brunt of space storms, some energy still manages to escape causing major problems with satellites, radio communication and power systems. And we're in for a wild ride as the Sun approaches its most active period in the solar cycle, which is predicted to peak in July 2025. In fact, the Sun is already showing more activity than usual for this early in the cycle. The good news is that this means your chances of catching a glimpse of the magnificent aurora are higher than ever, and they will only continue to improve over the next few years. But there's a darker side to this story. Losing Earth's magnetic field could have catastrophic consequences. Without our shield, we could lose the air we breathe, all thanks to the destructive force of the solar wind. This natural wind is so strong that it could easily rip gases from a planet's atmosphere until there is no gas left. In fact, that's likely what happened to Mars. Billions of years ago, Mars was a planet similar to Earth. However, something drastic happened and its magnetic field disappeared, leaving its atmosphere unprotected against the harsh solar wind. As a result, Mars lost its water and atmosphere, becoming the barren planet we know today. This raises the question, what would happen if our own magnetic field vanished? The answer is bleak. 
our atmosphere, oceans, and ultimately life on Earth would be at risk. But before that happens, animal life would suffer the consequences. Many animals, including birds, sea turtles, lobsters, honeybees, salmon, and fruit flies rely on Earth's magnetic field to guide them on their journeys. Without it, they would be lost and disoriented, and their populations would likely suffer. In the winter, birds use their natural compasses to migrate to warmer areas, while sea turtles use theirs to navigate through the open ocean to find the shores where they will lay their eggs. According to research, female sea turtles are believed to return to the same beaches every year, partly due to their innate compasses. Many animals, including sea turtles, migratory birds and honeybees, rely on the Earth's magnetic field for navigation. Without it, these creatures could become disoriented and face the risk of endangerment or even extinction. For example, sea turtles may get lost at sea, migratory birds may fly off course and put their lives in danger, and honeybees may lose their way in search of their hives, thus affecting the pollination of plants and flowers. So the importance of Earth's magnetic field goes beyond just protecting our atmosphere, but it's also crucial for the survival of various animal species. So let's hope our magnetic cape stays strong and keeps us protected for years to come. Meanwhile, CERN is not just exploring the secrets of the universe, but also leading its expertise to the development of autonomous driving technology. CERN has partnered with Zensact, a car safety software company, to conduct a three-year study on machine learning models that can enhance the decision-making of self-driving cars, allowing them to avoid accidents. CERN's unique abilities in data analysis and fast decision-making, from analyzing particle collisions in the Large Hadron Collider detectors, have been utilized to investigate how these techniques can be applied to autonomous driving. Their collaboration has focused on computer vision, which helps self-driving cars analyze and respond to their external environment, with the aim of making deep learning techniques faster and more accurate. According to Christopher Peterson, the research lead at Zensact, Deep learning has revolutionized computer vision, and image recognition applications are now more accurate than ever before. However, a recent project with CERN has revealed that there is still room for improvement when it comes to autonomous vehicles. To tackle this challenge, the researchers focused on using Field Programmable Gate Arrays FPGAs, as the hardware benchmark to process computer vision tasks. FPGAs are configurable integrated circuits that can execute complex algorithms in microseconds, and the team found that they could pack significantly more functionalities into them by optimizing existing resources. Even with limited computational resources, tasks could still be performed with high accuracy and short latency. This breakthrough could help self-driving cars make better decisions faster and ultimately prevent collisions on the road. Maurizio Pirini, a physicist at CERN, explains that the compression techniques discovered during their collaboration with Zensact can be applied to various other fields beyond high-energy physics. For instance, these techniques can be used to increase the processing efficiency in data centers while maintaining accuracy. Additionally, the same techniques can be used in medical applications, such as cell screening, and can lead to energy efficiency gains in a variety of domains. The future developments in this research area could potentially bring about a significant contribution to multiple other domains, as machine learning platforms set the stage for next generation solutions. Now let's hear what you think of CERN and its experiments in the comments section below.